Dr. Stocks, good to see you. Thanks for being here on Health Connection. You're welcome. Thank you. We are going to unlock with new answers the mystery of narcolepsy. Oh, good. Let's get a definition. What is narcolepsy? Uh, narcolepsy is a condition of the brain uh, in which uh, the individual has difficulty staying awake. Um, they have poor quality sleep, but the reason they're sleepy during the daytime is not really because the sleep is poor at night. It's just the brain doesn't know how to stay awake. That sounds like a serious problem. Well, try to drive a car uh -huh. when your eyes are closed. Yes. How common a problem is it? Um, there are about 150,000 people with narcolepsy here in the United States, which is about one in every 2,000 people. In 2009, we had the much publicized H1N1 flu pandemic, and that caused a spike in cases of narcolepsy. What's the connection? Well, it's uh, when we look at people with true narcolepsy, now you need to keep in mind that there are other conditions which can make somebody sleepy. Uh, sleep apnea, certain movement disorders, medications. Uh, narcolepsy is not the only problem uh, or disease that causes someone to be sleepy during the daytime. But what we know in true narcolepsy is that there's a chemical in the brain which helps us to normally stay awake and alert and the brain does not know how to manufacture that chemical properly and so the levels in the brain are very low and what we see, without this chemical to keep us awake, what we see is a person who is very sleepy. Now, what we've learned is that after uh, the H1N1 uh, pandemic in 2009, that there was a bump in the number of people uh, that were found to have narcolepsy. And in fact, there was a bump in people who got a specific type of influenza vaccine at that time, which is no longer available. And it turns out that people with H1N1 or who got that vaccine, their bodies got tricked into making antibodies against their own part of the brain that makes that chemical. And as a result, that part of the brain became damaged or injured the amount of that chemical that keeps us awake was diminished and we saw people with narcolepsy who otherwise might not have gotten it. So we then know that it's an autoimmune disease. That's exactly correct. And what we've learned in the last you know, year is that they can find chemical uh, evidence that it's an autoimmune disease, uh, a smoking gun, uh, so to speak. That, that shows that there are cells which are specifically tricked into acting against that part of the brain that makes uh, the, the chemical that keeps us awake. Well, determining that it's an autoimmune disease, what's the significance of that finding? Well, it, it probably is not going to be uh, in and of itself uh, anything other than one more step along the path to treatment because by the time you have uh, um, the symptoms of narcolepsy, we're, we're already talking that the damage to that part of the brain is probably pretty far advanced. And there's not anything in the near term uh, that, that we're going to be able to have those cells come back. If we were able to uh, catch narcolepsy or this damage in its earliest stages, then yes, maybe we could give them uh, some of the, the types of drugs we treat now, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, other immune type diseases. Maybe we could keep it from getting any worse. But the problem is all of us live on the edge of sleepiness every day. <laughs> and so by the time you really figure out, uh, yeah, that person is sleeping all the time, it's usually months to years after it has become obvious to everyone else. And as a result, it, it may well be too late to heal the brain. The, the injury has long since been accomplished. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that finding that it's an autoimmune disease is going to help us in the near term. 
uh, unless you're a researcher getting funding for such. <laughs> but in the long term, it, it will help us to establish maybe some treatments, maybe some tests to find narcolepsy quicker, uh, perhaps a blood test that would help us find it. But uh, there's probably not going to be a big difference in how we care for narcolepsy any time in the next decade. For the purposes of definition, what is an autoimmune disease? It, uh, well, we have an immune system that helps us to fight infection. Um, and that immune system uh, takes the place of, uh, or takes the form of antibodies and also cells which recognize what is you from everything else. So when a bacteria is introduced or a virus or a splinter, uh, into the body, the body knows that this isn't me, I need to fight it. And that is a process that fighting a foreign invader is a process of inflammation. The most obvious thing that we see is the skin turn red and get a, a bubble of pus when we have a splinter. But what happens in an autoimmune disease is that the body gets tricked. There's some exposure, some chemical, some invader which doesn't just trick the body or teach or cause the body into reacting against it, but it causes the body to react against itself. And so the body no longer is able to distinguish friend from foe. And so when it tries to create inflammation, that inflammation can damage the individual themselves, be it the nervous system, muscle system, um, parts of the brain, so or, for, or for an example, rheumatoid arthritis, cartilage. Absolutely. Those are example, that's an example of an autoimmune disease where the body has been tricked into fighting itself. Before we confirmed narcolepsy as an autoimmune disease, what did the medical and scientific communities think caused narcolepsy? Well, we do know that there are certain genetic predispositions. Most everyone with true narcolepsy has a certain um, characteristics of their body's immune system uh, that are the same as everyone else who has narcolepsy. So we looked at individuals who had narcolepsy as being probably predisposed or genetically susceptible. That's step number one. But there was obviously something else that was triggering the body into developing the, the symptoms of narcolepsy, sometimes in childhood, sometimes very late in life. And we have always imagined that it probably was an autoimmune dis disorder or an infectious disorder, but we were never sure until this past year. Are there any risk factors that will increase one's likelihood for having narcolepsy? Having a parent with it, hmm. meaning that you're likely to have inherited the genetic tendency. There are some individuals who develop narcolepsy-like symptoms after uh, brain injuries, um, but no, other than the familial risk, there aren't any risks such as smoking or drinking, et cetera. How do you know if you have narcolepsy? And I think the answer to this question is obvious, but we'll ask it. How serious is it? Well, someone who has, narcolepsy can come in various degrees of severity. It might be just something that you're a little drowsy at certain hours of the day, or it might be something that 15 minutes after you wake up from a 10 hour you know, night in bed, you're ready to go back to sleep again and may fall asleep whether you want to or not. So if you're, trying to be a, if you're trying to succeed in work, at school, or safely drive a car, or not embarrass you falling asleep in front of everyone else that you meet, that's very serious. Dangerous, embarrassing, it's very serious. How do we treat narcolepsy and what effect will this most recent finding with respect to it being an autoimmune disease, how will that change how narcolepsy is treated in the future? Uh, for the short term, the only treatment we're likely to see is what we have now, which are various chemicals that help the brain to stay more awake and alert. 
Uh, Ritalin is one such drug that, that is used uh, f uh, for narcolepsy. The, the drugs which are in the amphetamine class of medications. Uh, the bottom line is, is that we're using prescription medications for most people who have serious amounts or degrees of narcolepsy. Someone with a very mild form of it, they might get away with drinking a few extra cups of coffee and scheduling what we call a therapeutic nap for 15 or 20 minutes during the daytime. But for the vast majority of people with serious narcolepsy, they're going to have to uh, take stimulant medications every day. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much. You're welcome.